There are five key financial metrics to consider when you're considering a HECM, a home equity conversion mortgage. And here to talk with me about this is Robert Klein from the Retirement Income Center. Robert, welcome. Thank you, Bob. So we're eager to have you walk us through these five metrics, but first I think there's some definitional things we have to cover. Uh, yeah, I wanted to distinguish between a HECM and a HELOC um, because a lot of people are familiar with HELOCs, but not necessarily with HECMs. Uh, basically, a HECM is designed to unlock home equity for homeowners as needed through a readily available credit line without the downsides uh, associated with a HELOC. And those include, uh, first of all, access for a specified number of years, typically 10 uh, required monthly payments. Um, the lender can freeze or cancel your loan. Um, a home is subject to foreclosure if minimum payments aren't paid, and there's a requirement to repay the loan in full, even if the borrower owns more than the home is worth. And uh, let me just briefly touch on that as far as a HECM is concerned. With a HECM, when the home is ultimately sold, there's no need to make up the difference if it's upside down, if the mortgage exceeds the value of the home that's covered through FHA insurance. Um, and then there's one more difference, which uh, it could be the most important difference with a HELOC, you might not qualify for one when you most need it during retirement. You might you're not have the uh, sources for repayment that are required to qualify for, for a HELOC. Mm. Um, but you know, the point is all homeowners should, um, whether or not they have a mortgage, evaluate a HECM when they turn 62 because that's the qualifying age. Right. And we can get into some of the reasons why you might want to have a HECM, but uh, I'd love for you to walk us through these five metrics that you've established in terms of evaluating um, whether to get a HECM or not. Yeah. So there's five metrics and the way I came up with them uh, is they're generally, uh, most people don't use a consistent uh, system or process for evaluating HECMs. They are familiar with a couple of things and uh, will put emphasis on those. The point of this is to provide a process that anybody can use in any HECM situation to evaluate the HECM. So starting with the first one is the projected mortgage balance. Most people are familiar with that. And um, in all cases with these five metrics, what you wanna do is stack them up side by side with your existing mortgage, assuming you have one, um, or even if you don't and you're planning on uh, adding a HECM, uh, you can come up with an amount that you would like to use for a ha be comfortable with for to draw on for a credit line from a HECM. Um, but so with a projected mortgage balance, uh, most people going into retirement still have a mortgage and oftentimes it's going to go on for several years, maybe 10 or 20 more years. And uh, once again, even if you don't have a, a, heck, a mortgage balance or it's a minimal balance, you should still consider a HECM if you're 62 or older, if access to tax-free liquidity is important to you or will be important to you during your retirement. And there's two primary advantages of a HECM over uh, a traditional mortgage, which is otherwise known as a forward mortgage. Uh, first of all, there's no required loan payments. And second of all, you have ongoing access to a tax-free line of credit that will increase by the loan interest rate as well as any uh, elective payments that you do make on the HECM. Mm. That's uh, metric number one. Uh, metric number two is projected savings. Uh, whenever you're making mortgage payments, you're using money that could otherwise be used for other purposes. So to the extent you have a HECM available uh, that doesn't have required payments, that frees up the money that you were previously using to pay a mortgage. Um, and you know you can use that for savings or for other purposes. Uh, metric number three is projected net worth as it pertains to a HECM, uh, it's equal to your total mortgage balance, which is a, you always have to 
refer to that as a negative amount um, because it drains net worth uh, plus projected savings plus your projected home value. That's your projected net worth at, as it pertains to a HECM. So through these first three metrics, most people are familiar with those. Uh, where it gets different is with metric number four, where uh, you're looking at a projected line of credit. You might be familiar with a HELOC, but the projected line of credit works a little differently with the HECM. And one of the advantages of the HECM compared to the HELOC, as we previously stated, is the ongoing access to a tax-free line of credit. And once again, it increases uh, by the interest rate on the loan and any payments that you decide to make on the HECM. And uh, one of the strategies that can be used with a HECM, even though you're not required to make payments, is to uh, continue making payments that you were making on the mortgage. And not only will that pay down the loan balance, that will increase your credit line. Um, and so that's number four. Metric number five is liquidity. And combined, when you look at number four and number five combined, those two are the most compelling factors favoring the use of a HECM as a retirement income planning tool for prolonging the longevity of retirement assets. So what is liquidity as it pertains to a HECM? Uh, it's equal to the total of two of the previous metrics, number two, the projected savings, and number four, your projected line of credit. When you add those two together, you have projected liquidity and the ability to readily access funds from savings as a result of not making payments combined with a readily available tax-free credit line during one's retirement years um, especially when alternative sources of income may be few and far between, this distinguishes HECMs as a unique retirement planning solution. Right. And you've created a scoring system to help uh, folks determine which, um, which option to choose. I have, yeah. Um, and the scoring system assigns points to uh, each of the uh, uh, criteria for first, second, or third place. And I make the point in the article uh, that you should not go solely by the highest score because that might not be the best strategy in your situation. Uh, you need to go beyond that to see what's most important to you. Uh, so, you know, just as a quick example, uh, you, you might have a HECM that you're looking at where you're going the traditional route and you're not making any payments. And so that is great from a uh, savings point of view and liquidity point of view. Uh, however, it might behoove you to continue making payments on a HECM that you were previously making on a mortgage because that will inevitably give you a much larger uh, credit line if you start early and keep doing that consistently. And so if that's the most important criteria to you to have a uh, higher credit line um, later in retirement when you might need it for, let's say, long-term care expenses, uh, that could be the, the way to go. Uh, but it, it does start, as you pointed out, Bob, with a this scoring system that I've developed. And uh, by the way, it should be mentioned that, you know, it behooves you if you're considering a HECM to uh, go through the illustrations and the spreadsheets and the article. I, it'll give you a much better understanding of uh, how this all works. I know that a HECM isn't for everyone, but before I talk about that, Robert, um, when I think about HECMs and their use, um, many years ago, folks downplayed their use and value, but increasingly over the past few years, academicians and others have uh, highlighted the potential uses, one of which has to do with uh, mitigating or managing the risk of sequence of return risk, where perhaps in, if you didn't have a, uh, a HECM, you might have to draw down from a, a uh, an account, an investment portfolio that was declining in value, whereas if you had access to a HECM, you could pull money from the HECM and, uh, and, and not touch your investment portfolio. Any thoughts about that? Uh, that is a fantastic use of HECMs, um, and a lot of people 
aren't thinking about that necessarily right now because they're used to the stock market you know going up 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 and so it's easy to take money out uh however it's a good idea from a planning perspective if you're 62 to have a heckum in place uh ready to go in the event that the stock market i shouldn't even say in the event when the stock market does decline you have tax-free access and that pertains to non-retirement funds. If you're in a situation where you have uh, RMDs from IRAs or 401ks, you have to take those no matter you know what the stock market is doing. But if you have a non-retirement portfolio, uh, that works great with the HECM. Right. So it, HECMs, uh, as you mentioned in the article, aren't for everyone. Uh, care to walk us through who they're not for? Yeah, as a starting point, you know, if you know you're going to be selling your home in the near future, let's say in the next five years, Heckam probably wouldn't be the way to go because the costs of the Heckam, the initial costs are sizable, uh, most notably because of the insurance premium that's required. Um, so that would be one case. And then there's a, a few other situations where if you're focus solely on paying off your traditional mortgage, um, that might not be a good way to go. Uh, a second case would be if you already paid off your mortgage and you're unwilling to borrow against your home. A lot of people going into retirement say, hey, I've gotten to this point, I paid off my mortgage, uh, I don't want to you know, put debt on the home. Um, and a third case would be if you're unable to justify the value of having ready access to an increasing tax-free line of credit during your retirement relative to the initial costs of the HECM. Um, if, you know, if you don't understand all, uh, the purpose of the cost and you're not comfortable with that, uh, you might not be a good candidate for a HECM either. Um, but you know, having said that, it's still a good exercise to go through to see how a HECM would work in your situation. Mm. So we've covered a lot of ground. Um, anything that we haven't touched upon that you might want to uh, make uh, reference to or anything that you might want to reemphasize that you already talked about? Uh, just in general, that the HECM is really, it's a unique situation. Uh, you know, when the value of it is understood, which, you know, doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you have to look at a lot of examples, see how it works in your situation. But when it's understood and it's implemented early in retirement, once again, you're eligible at 62 and it's used strategically to unlock illiquid home equity. Uh, it can be used to increase after tax cash flow at opportune times during retirement. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a worthwhile strategy to explore. Mm. Well, Robert, as you know, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. It's a pleasure having you write for us and do these interviews with us and sharing your knowledge and wisdom. So greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Bob. I enjoy it very much. Mm -hmm.